Hi, everyone. So um, my name is Donna, for those who don't know me. Uh, welcome to today's Tuck Shop Network meeting um, brought to you by the Healthier Tuck Shop Support Program. Um, today we're having a bit of fun. We're going to talk about special theme days and how to prepare for the year ahead. Um, so surprisingly, there's actually quite a lot of opportunities throughout the year where you can engage um, the school community on a theme day so you know outside of the normal Easter and Christmas there's actually quite a lot um, so we'll go through that in a moment um, but just to get started what I'll do is I will uh, do an acknowledgement of country we always uh, start our meetings with that um, so Cost acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands from across Queensland we pay our respects to the elders past present and emerging for they hold the memories the traditions, the culture, and the hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples across the state. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Donna Moyle. Um, I am the project officer for the Healthy Attack Shop Support Program here at Quest. I'm a nutritionist by background. I also have 15 plus years in stakeholder engagement and health promotion. Um, and I've been involved in local school PNCs and school tuck shops for six years, but it's probably more like seven or eight when I actually did the math the other day. So quite a long time. Um, those are my contact details down at the bottom of the screen if you did want to get in contact. Um, we normally do a little bit of an introduction, but we do have quite a few people on the call. So I think uh, what we might do today is there will be an opportunity for everyone to say hello and introduce themselves a little bit later because I'll be sort of throwing out to you guys what you got you might do at your school or if you've got any questions. Um, so all I ask is that when you do come on, just say hello, my name is and I'm from this school. Um, and then they, you know, everyone gets an opportunity to chat to each other and, and get to know each other. In terms of what's happening at the moment at Quast, uh, look, we've been really busy. It's another, it's been a really busy, busy term. Um, we've got Term 4 Magazine's Healthier Tuck Shop e-newsletter. That's been re released. If you haven't seen that, do head to our website. There's lots of fun stuff going on in there. Um, Talking, Tuck uh, Talking Tuck Shops is like an e-magazine. Um, that's also recently been released. That's to our members only. It would have come through in an email. But again, you can, if you're a member, you can access that online. Um, and if you need any of the resources that we also have, please do check out our Healthier Tuck Shops webpage. There's plenty of resources online. Um, don't forget our recipes. All of those are free for you to download should you wish. Um, and also, if you do have a question, we have Tuck Shop Conversations. I think most of you here might be members of that group, but it's a Facebook group and it is designed for Tuck Shop conveners. And it's specifically just for the for a safe place for you guys to ask general questions to other tuck shop conveners across Queensland. So it's via our cost, um, I guess, Facebook page. You can find it as one of our groups. So we monitor that page, but we don't really actively get involved in discussions. It's really set up to provide you guys a safe platform. So it's really just for conveners. Um, but if you ever need any advice or if there's any questions that cost can help provide answers to, we do like to get on and just point people in the right direction. Um, but I did see a post there yesterday, actually, about um, the buckets that people use. So there was a question around, you know, what do people use for distributing a primary school, distributing all the meals out to all the different classrooms? And it was really interesting to see all the different responses of from all the different schools about what they use. And there was some um, tubs that I hadn't seen before. And I actually really like that idea. So I'm going to send that through to the local convener at my tuck shop or well, my son's tuck, uh, school tuck shop because they've been having issues with buckets. And I think that these might be an alternative solution. So it's actually a really good place for you just to go and get different ideas, float some ideas in the group. Um, and they, I find that they're really helpful and the tuck shop conveners that do get involved have really good advice. So I've really enjoyed seeing sort of, I guess, that engagement happen because uh, it's really lovely to see tuck shop conveners sharing ideas across this really, uh, this, this closed group platform. Um, but here we are today, we're here to talk about theme days. So theme days, are, I guess, I was saying before we started, for me, they're like a bit of fun in amongst all of the, the, the grind that we do every year. It's about trying to take a step back and it's like scheduling in a fun day because I think if we don't schedule it in, if we don't plan for it, then these theme days don't really happen because you do need to put a little bit of thought into them. Um, but, you know, you can make it as fun as as you like, to be honest. Um, so I think it really is all about making sure that 
you don't have to do every single one, but it's about maybe planning three or four throughout the year and then trying to look at the menu to see how you can either change the names of menu items or introduce like one-off um, menu items for the day, uh, just to have a bit of fun with it. Because I think it's about thing days we find are really good for community engagement because it gets the kids interested in it um, quite often because the, like, you know, if you're bringing in new menu items, they're not always available every day. And if it's got a nice little theme to it, then I think the kids get really excited and they get involved. Um, and it seems to be like a lot of fun. So, and you can go as crazy as you like, or just as simple as changing the names on all the menu items. Uh, and, you know, whatever works for you and for your, uh, in the capacity that you have in your tuck shop, it's just a good idea, I think, to, you know, think about what you would like to do and the capabilities that you have to be able to do those things. Uh, we did ask a question recently in Tuck Shop Conversations of the days. So um, what sort of days throughout the year or theme days do people decorate the, the Tuck Shop for or create special menu items for? So the popular ones which surprised me actually was State of Origin. I didn't realise so many schools did a State of Origin theme day, but that was really cool to see because I could imagine there'd be, particularly down near the, the border, there would be like a... a you know, particularly in the tweed, there'd almost be like a competition between, you know, north of the border, south of the border. Easter, that's a really common one. We do have a lot of requests for Easter themed recipes. So I wasn't surprised about that one. Christmas, that's really good to see that people are sort of getting into the spirit for end of year. I do have a couple of recipe ideas for some fun treats for the kids, um, which I'll show you in a couple of slides as well. Um, the other one I saw recently actually was Halloween. So I saw quite a few schools getting involved in Halloween, which this year, which looked like so much fun, like just looked like everyone was having the best time. Um, and then the other ones as well. So I guess I wanted to pose a similar question to you guys in the group. Uh, what sort of, if you have done any theme days or special days throughout the year, what have they been and what did you do on those days? And feel free to just take yourself off, off mute and have a chat if you can. Otherwise, you can put it in the chat and I can relay it to everyone. Oh, Book Week, Alicia. Yes, Alicia, yes. Book Week is a big one. I found that that's getting more and more popular with schools. Uh, does anyone else do Book Week? No. Wendy, did you do anything at the moment at your school? Um, uh, <laughs> we used to do a hot cross bun day around Easter yeah. yep. um, but the last time that didn't go as well um, and we usually do a Christmas meal deal uh, I try and do it close enough around the 25th of November so it's like a month out of Christmas um, yeah. and yeah they're about the main ones that we do sometimes if it's on St Patrick's Day we might just dress up it's more about dressing okay. up for some of them yeah yeah that's good. Yeah, actually, you're right. I think sometimes it's more about the dress ups than it is about changing yeah. the food, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's a and good we've point, decorated actually. the whole tuck shop with Christmas decorations and that for the end of the year. And I bring in all my little toys that you can press the button on and they sing carols. And the kids love that. That's so much fun. Yeah, they would. They would love that interaction. I would love to press buttons with like Christmas, like themed songs going off every five minutes. Yeah. Sounds like a I lot think of the fun. teachers are the worst. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, God, we're all children at heart, aren't we, really? <laughs> um, now, I've got some... Oh, hi, Lisa from Stretton. How are you? I just saw you log on. Um, so what do you do? You do a big Christmas... So Lisa uh, does a big Christmas dress-up. They all wear matching T-shirts and headbands for about three weeks. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's like, again, I think it's more... It sounds like it's more the dress-ups rather than it is anything else just to give you guys a bit more fun in the actual tuck shop itself. That sounds um, fantastic. I like that idea. I might maybe to do a dress up thing. I think that's actually quite cool. I like that one. Um, oh, and then Alicia was also saying, oh, sorry. Hi, Kent. How are you? Uh, yeah, we do a um, a pink day in, Oct in October for breast cancer awareness because we're a girls, all, all girls school. So yeah, we do yeah. like, everything from pink lamingtons and then we do like ham wraps and stuff because of the pink and yeah just everything's either dyed pink or yeah something for the day just as something different and we yeah, all dress up in pink shirts and stuff for the day and 
they have a competition between other schools in Rockhampton. Uh, they call it uh, Pink Gate Day, and they have all balloons and stuff, and they decorate the gates, and they get the local radio station, everything involved, to go and judge um, all the different um, schools of who, who's got the best awareness and stuff for uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's awesome. I love that all the schools are competing against each other for a fun and it's obviously like a good cause too that's fantastic that's such yeah. a nice idea does anybody else do that for breast cancer awareness i don't know if anyone is responding it's really hard for me the way i've got my screen set up um yeah wouldn't that be awesome if we did that like that would be kind of cool i like that you guys are like tr setting the scene up there kent yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> our southerners should uh, get our act together by the sounds of it rocky you're leading the way that's awesome um well that's really good actually i like the idea of dress ups i hadn't thought about that so i think that's a good one i'm going to keep that in my back pocket for something in the future i think i've just had a couple of ideas come through um so i guess the big thing is also when i stalked a few schools if i'm honest on facebook so i apologize if your school is one of the ones that i've stolen a post from and popped it on the screen but i just wanted to show you like how much fun people are making it so the one i really like is well, I mean, I like them all, to be honest. I love this one from Courage on State High School, that's from State School, the one here with the Halloween post. Um, and they've just gone nuts with it. Like, they actually have, like, uh, it just it looked like so much fun. Like, I can't really zoom in on it. But they have, like, these little, um, they had, like, they had bought these little pumpkin almost, like, little tiny little bags. And they've put, like, all this, like, fruit in it. Um, and then there was another one that was just full of lollies and then they had spiders. Um, you can see the jelly with the googly eyes in it. I thought that was hilarious. Um, yeah, it does look amazing. It looks very cool, Lisa. I mean, obviously, you know, most of these things that I'm seeing on the screen are all red food items. And I think some, I think that's a good reminder of, you know, I know like smart choices, you know, it's about striving for healthy eating, but they do allow for days where you can just have a bit of fun with the food. And so these theme days are a really good day to go, you know what, we've worked really hard to, you know, give our kids healthy food, like for every other day this term, we're going to just go nuts today and just really have a lot of fun with it. Um, I love these. I saw these ones were cookie jars over on the right-hand side here. So um, it's like a fundraiser at the same time. But what they've done is they've put all of the recipe to make homemade cookies in a jar and then they're selling the jars through the tuck shop and the kids get to go home and make um, Merry Christmas cookies. And I thought that was a really good idea because it's they're getting involved. You're not necessarily providing any food for them, but you're actually getting them involved in wanting to go home and cook. And I so I, I thought that was actually a very, very uh, innovative idea. I hadn't seen that one before. Um, I saw a fairy bread day. I don't know if you guys knew that there, there's actually a national fairy bread day in Australia um, on the 24th of November. So there you go. Um, so that was interesting. I saw that one. Spider day. Someone else had a spider day at the tuck shop. They just decided to do spiders. Um, Halloween again. St. Patrick's Day. Um, I like the one from Bly Bly where they did this Happy Star Wars and um, on a new market state school it was and they did like lightsabers but they put like fruit along so like it wasn't just sort of a, a straw it was actually fruit attached to it and then new markets also gone and put it up um may the four be with you like and then yeah it was really cool i just really enjoyed it i spent hours like just talking you all on facebook so i apologize if i've liked random things on your facebook pages because i was just having such the best time um, so I love that there's already stuff happening out in tuck shops um, and people are having a bit of fun with it. So I guess the big thing for me was to sort of chat to you about um, what some theme days you could do for 2024. So we have this members calendar here. So if you're not a member, I'd take a screenshot. But if you are a member, you can just download this from our website. But these are all the opportunities to do a theme day throughout the year. Um, we don't do any in January because January, I mean, aside from Australia Day, uh, but most schools don't go back until the end of January. Um, but absolutely, Australia Day is one of those theme days. If you wanted to, you could do something then. Um, but we so we run it from February through to December. 
Um, and obviously first week back in February is um, healthy lunchbox week. So that's even though it's all about healthy lunch boxes, we do see tuck shops getting involved in that instead of sell, selling meal deals that are kind of like a lunch box. Um, so you could get involved in that if you wanted to. Um, and that's not necessarily changing your um, menu, but it's probably more encouraging people to buy sandwiches with a piece of fruit and then maybe a bottle of water or something. So something simple, but just getting parents back into the, um, what's the word, um, getting used to making lunches again after six weeks of not really having to pack a lunch, um, you know, they, helping them out by encouraging them to buy a lunch back. Um, over the like online or getting the kids to order it over the counter is a really good idea. Um, from uh, what have we got for March? So we've got St Patrick's Day. Harmony Day is a really beautiful one. I see a lot of flowers and people doing a lot of community engagement work for Harmony Day. I've seen some really pretty themed days for that one. Meatball Day. I didn't even know that was a thing. On that's next year on the 9th of March. So if anyone likes meatballs or you know your kids like meatballs. Um, that's a great opportunity just to have a one-off, promote it heavily, obviously, like you would just keep promoting it in the weeks ahead um, of the day and going, we're having a special, it's it's National Meatball Day on the 9th of March. So we're doing a meatball sub or we're doing a meatball spaghetti pasta or something. It's a lot of fun. Um, grain Day, a whole grain day in March. What else is there? I can see corn on the cob day on the 11th of June. So, yeah, there's lots of different things to have a look at here. Um, National Watermelon Day in August. I mean, it's in the middle of our winter, which is a bit of a shame, but um, watermelons are plenty around that time. So that's a really good one to get involved with as well. And I guess the further north we go, it's, you know, we don't really get winter sort of really even in Brisbane these days. It's not that cold all the time. So, but yeah, lots of fun ones in there. Tuck Shop Day is a big one in November. Where possible, always try and celebrate yourselves, guys. Like this is an opportunity for you to get out there and go, well, you know, we're going to throw the normal menu to the wind today and we're going to do something fun that we like to do. Uh, maybe just do treats on that day. Just something fun. Just have a bit of fun with it. Enjoy it. And it's a nice time of year because it's towards the end of the year. We're all getting tired. So it's a really nice time to just sort of sit back um, and celebrate ourselves in tuck shops I think I think it's a really good opportunity to do it um, and within all of these we do have a lot of recipes to support some of these so um, when you are going online to our website please check out um, some recipes that might um, you know you could google I think I've got it on the next slide actually oh no I've got some Christmas ideas which I want to show in a second um, but on our website if you go into our search function it's actually really good if you type in something like Valentine's Day um, if we've got any recipes that are like Valentine's Day appropriate, they'll come up. Um, even St. Patrick's Day, I know we do, like the popular one, I know a lot of people downloaded the green pancakes. So people make pancakes, but they just colour them green and the kids love them and eat them up on St. Patrick's Day. And that's an easy one for them. Um, so yeah, have a look and see what you can find on our website. Um, but being that it is Christmas, um, we have just launched a new Christmas resource. So um, we thought it would be a lot of fun and we really wanted to um, encourage people to, um, to have a bit of fun towards the end of the year. So, um, and these are some of the recipes that we, so we didn't create any of these recipes, but we have tried a few of them at home and we have put a few of them up on our website as well as part of this resource. But I do have a few to share with you today, which I thought might be a little bit of fun. So the first one is the watermelon and kiwi cup. So these are not that expensive. Well, they're actually very cheap to make and not that difficult to make. So all you need are just like um, really tiny cups. So like 100 mils, so not even a big one. So think about sort of, a, or if you've got an icy pole mold that you have in the tuck shop, these are really fun ones. So you just literally whir up the watermelon. We've got the method here. I'll send these to you um, after the for, um, after the meeting. I'll send you a copy of the recipe so you don't have to write any of this down. Um, so you just do the watermelon puree, the kiwi puree, and then you just prepare the cups. And the reason why you put the watermelon in the bottom and the kiwi at the top is because um, the watermelon actually, because of the viscosity, will sit at the bottom better. So you do red first and then green. Um, and then you pop them out and they look like this. And the kids get to have a really fun one. So I've done something similar before, but we used like a mango. 
So we had like mango kiwi cups. Um, but this one I think is a bit Christmassy with the watermelon and kiwi and I really like that. So, and you can sweeten them up a little bit with maple syrup if you wanted to, or you could put a little bit, a little bit of lime juice is always helpful. It just adds a little bit more flavor I have found for that one. So that's a really fun one to do. Um, and that serves 14, this recipe here. So, um, it's just about figuring out how many you might want to sell or just limit them. They can just be fun. If you only have, you know, capacity to make 30, then you just sell 30 on the day and see how you go. The other one that we really liked were these Christmas banana snowmen. Um, I thought they were pretty cool. I was a bit worried about the banana browning with this one. So I did try it out at home and I did find as long as I didn't make them too early in the morning and then I covered them in the fridge and kept them covered, then they actually kept, they, they didn't brown too badly and they're actually pretty, still pretty tasty and pretty yummy. Um, and my kids really liked them actually. So they loved eating because they're all boys. They loved eating the heads off the um, the Santa's, honestly. They just, I didn't even think about that, but they just had so much joy in eating the heads off. Um, now, I've just got a message from Sharon saying she just did a mixed berry banana milk mix into an icebox. That, Sharon? So berry, banana, and milk. That would be really nice, actually, for the last meal deal. Um, and so how many of those, I don't know, you probably have to text it, um, in the chat Sharon but how many of those did you end up making and how many do you expect to sell like will you sell out or do you think you'll have some left over from that one and if you guys have done anything similar please do let me know if you've tried the banana thing before and it didn't work uh, let me know um, 160 oh my god and how long did that take how long did that take you to make, Sharon? Over four days. Okay, so progressively over four days she made them and just kept refreezing them, I'm assuming, pulled them out of the um, moulds and put them in to a freezer or something and then repeated the process. Good for four days like 160 obviously that's not the only thing you did I'm assuming for four days you just did it in amongst other activities uh coffee cups yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah so just use whatever you've got don't you really like with molds um and there's some really good I think on a couple of slides before there was a picture of like pizzas that were in the shape of Christmas um I think it was a what was it a um star and there was a um, a gingerbread man or something but there were pizza shapes and I think all the cookie cutters these days are really really good so it's really easy just to, to cut them into shapes and have a bit fun with it so it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to genuinely look like it's a um you know a Christmassy something um so they're the two recipes that I thought might be a little bit of fun so I'll share them with you so have a go take try them at home first see how it goes um, I did find sometimes with bananas, if you put a little bit of lemon juice over the top of them, they don't go so brown, but they do, you know, lemon juice is a bit, it's it's a bit bitter. So some kids don't like it, but my kids didn't know this. Um, these are some of the other ones on our, that we do have. So for book week, we always find the hungry caterpillar is really popular. So we've got this really cute little recipe of this, um, of the caterpillar. So we just use a cherry tomato and then we've just cut, little circles in sandwiches and because the circles are little you actually don't lose that much of the sandwich because you can get four circles out of each sandwich and they're really simple like it's just a ham sandwich and then a cheese sandwich and then a ham sandwich and a cheese sandwich and you just sort of layer it up on a plate so you don't have to connect them you just layer it up on a plate like this and it looks like a little caterpillar so and that's really cute the little kids like preppies in particular they really love that little one um the pieces for halloween are a lot of fun and I've, I saw that these are Christmas trees with guacamole and then cherry tomatoes on top. So you could, you know, have a little bit of fun with that. And then cheese for a star. Um, but I do know that Book Week is a big one. Obviously, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day. So just go on our website and have a look and see what you can find. Um, and I guess the big thing around getting ready early is making sure that you're looking at the beginning of the term and setting it out early so that 
and you just pick one day. Like there's so many options out there. Um, it's just about at the beginning of the year, just saying, look, these are the four days or the three days we want to have a little bit of fun. And then you slowly just start building ideas around it. And if you have to get approval through the PNC, it's always a good idea to start early because um, I know that sometimes PNC approvals can take a while. So making sure that they're comfortable with it. But I think presenting it at the beginning of the year, saying this is what I'd like to do. This is some fun community engagement things. These are some of the theme days that I would like to do. Um, and just having a bit of fun with it. Um, oh, look, that's the presentation. It was really easy and quite quick today. Um, I was hoping, you know, if there's any ideas that you guys wanted to share um, that you might feel comfortable sharing with the group, if there's any of you there, that would be really good just to give some ideas. Um, if not, please do share them in touch with conversations as well. Someone's come off mute. Who was that? Anybody? No. Um, but yeah, I mean, and also we've got plenty of time. So if you got, do you guys have any questions um, that you wanted to ask about theme days? Does anybody think that there, it's a, is, has anybody got some new ideas after this little session today? Hello. Yes, hi, David. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? All? Good, thank you. That was a very interesting presentation. and uh, Thanks for that. Obviously, I'm not actually involved in tuck shops, but I've been fiddling around on your website in the last few days uh, because we've, we've long-time supporters. With, um, I'm from Sushi Pro on the Gold Coast. We're long-time supporters of Quast, and we want to get involved in it a little bit more. I noticed with your theme days... Um, no one actually said Sushi Day. It is Sushi Day. Okay. I've been involved with schools for 12 years now. And what I see is, and I do encourage it for the smaller schools, is um, where they might not be able to do sushi every day. Um, they are very popular in the smaller schools, particularly even more remote schools that we are able to deliver to. Um, they... Yeah, they're very successful. So they might get a, a few hundred rolls and obviously they can make a little bit of money on that as far as um, fundraising goes. And look, we're on uh, we're based in Burley Heads and we deliver all throughout South East Queensland. So if you want any more information on any of that, in our website, sushi-pro.au. Thank you well, thank for you your David. time today. Thank you <laughs> Up, it might be rude of me, but um, <laughs> yeah, well, it might be rude of me, but um, anyway, I just thought I noticed just your theme day um presentation, and I thought, I'd, yeah, might be an opportunity because once upon a time, back in the old days when we all used to gather, we used to come to these type of presentations and give people some sushi and have a bit of a discussion and and network a little bit more rather than doing it all remotely. But um, obviously, COVID and and the world has changed a lot since then. Well, I've just had a message from Lisa um, from Stratton, and she was just saying that she uses you guys every week, and she wanted to say thank you, David. You okay. did a great job. Yeah, well, thank so you. There you go. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, look, there's some schools we do good. weekly, okay. there's schools we do daily. Um, and But like I say, with, with the smaller schools, often they can't get the numbers up to make it viable. But I, they do certainly yeah. um, have that facility to do a sushi day. And a lot more schools I've noticed as well, um, particularly in the last couple of terms, are sort of struggling for volunteers. So they're struggling to open. They might only open one day a week or two days a week. Um, so obviously bringing in food's a, a better option than having to make 200 sandwiches, you know? Yeah, absolutely. A right, question for you, David. Do you deliver as far as Dolby? Uh <laughs> oh, my friend Dolby. Um, we have a third party that delivers to Dolby, so we go. We send it out through the Food Works. Um, so we okay. don't directly deliver to Dolby. We deliver to Toowoomba, um, yep. and and I think um, I've had discussions with the milk guy up there who does deliver to Dolby, but we haven't been able to uh, coordinate a drop-off time at this stage. But maybe for next year. 
Well, Rayleigh, because Rayleigh just did put a question out there to say um, uh, you're having trouble getting uh, suppliers out to Dolby. So maybe it might be worth trying to touch base with David in the new year, Rayleigh. Yeah, yeah. You know. And we might be able to coordinate it through the milk guy or so they've got the food works won't do it for us to, you know, they're not geared up to deliver to schools. Like they, they just drop a pallet of everything off at FoodWorks, including sushi. but um, Or maybe they can arrange it through the, the FoodWorks. But by all means, yeah, make contact yeah. with us and we can see if we can work things out. Um, yeah, because the just look, thing with schools is it needs to be quite, an, it needs to be quite a, um, like long delivery time frames don't really work for schools. So it's about being able to provide the orders. You know, if they order it for Wednesday, that it arrives on the Friday. Or if they put the order in by Tuesday, they can get it by Friday or something. Because I think no one really thinks about sushi in two weeks' time. I think that's no. a challenge for out that way, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah that's right. But, so, look, we, yeah. we deliver six days a week to all areas of southeast Queensland. Um, but anyway, look, thank you for your time. I did appreciate your uh, presentation and it you know, gives a food for thought for a whole range of things. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. No worries. Um, I, um, I see uh, I see that um, Mary Ann has just joined. Hi, Mary Ann. How are you? Um, we're just about to finish up, actually, I think, but... Um, I did, uh, if you've got any questions, just let me know, Marianne, but I will also send you this presentation as well via email so you've got a copy of it. Um, but did anyone have any other questions or would like to share something before we uh, finish out today? Any other secret suppliers that I need to be aware of online? No. All right, well, um, I'm just sharing my screen, I think, and so I can see everyone again. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for joining in today. Um, I hope that gave you a little bit of an idea around what to, you know, in terms of planning for the year ahead, uh, think, keeping an idea about what theme days you can get involved in. So we have that really handy calendar available for download online. So maybe download that before you go on holidays and then have a think about it. So when you come back to the school year, you can sort of just you mark the ones you'd like to have a go at and um, start small is my recommendation and then build, build on that. So, but yeah, thanks everyone for coming along to the network meeting. I really do appreciate it. I know it's a time of year when everyone's really tired and um, kind of just wanting the, the, you know, the school terms to be over or the holidays to begin. So I really do appreciate your coming here today. Um, again, always, if you have any questions, please do email us or give us a call in the office. We're open pretty much right up until the 16th of December. Um, and this year, we're actually, the office is closed until, I think it's the 9th, I think is the Monday of January. So we're taking a couple of weeks of leave this year over the Christmas period because we figured you guys are having a break, so we will too. Uh, but Quast will be back online pretty early in January. And we've got some training coming up early in the year so if you're interested in doing training you could do that um, or if you really want some help getting your tap shop ready for the new year please do give us a call we're more than happy to help in ever, whichever way we can so thanks everybody um, I might end it there if you've got any questions please do let me know email me um, and yeah have a, have a very safe Christmas to you all and safe holidays and we'll see you in the new year bye bye everyone